50,000 people used to live here. Now it's a ghost town. We all know the story by now. In the late 90s, EA held a monopoly on the World War II first-person shooter genre with their flagship franchise, Medal of Honor. A group of 22 developers from the original Medal of Honor development team, 2015 Inc., including Vince Sampala, Grant Collier, and Jason West, among others, broke off and formed what is now known as Infinity Ward and created their own World War II first-person shooter, Call of Duty. With their publishing deal with Activision, Infinity Ward, and eventually Treyarch, Raven Software, and Sledgehammer Games would go on to make countless Call of Duty installments spanning conflicts from World War II, the Cold War, into the near future, and even into space. One of my favorites took place in modern times. Flashback over a decade ago to 2007. Being a high school student, I balanced working nights at a pizza shop with homework and hanging out with friends. I was also entranced by the allure of online gaming, and while I played my fair share of other titles during that time, like Gears of War 2, Battlefield Bad Company, or Left 4 Dead, the majority of my free time was spent on Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. Its addicting multiplayer combined with an immersive single-player campaign made for one of the most innovative, influential, and genre-defining games of the last generation. Call of Duty 4, or as it's known today, is just Modern Warfare fair takes place in 2011 and focuses on two different soldiers fighting two unique conflicts. Sergeant Paul Jackson of the United States Marine Corps First Force Reconnaissance Company and Sergeant John Soap McTavish of the SAS's Bravo team. Modern Warfare's plot is engaging and is executed brilliantly on both the gameplay and storytelling front. The civil war between Russian loyalists and ultranationalist rebels has engulfed the continent of Asia in war with Inram Zakayev leading the ultranationalist camp. The SAS's mission is to support the loyalists in defeating the ultranationalists, effectively restoring some kind of peace to the country for the time being, and making sure the 15,000 nukes at stake remain undetonated. Meanwhile, in the Middle East, the United States Marine Corps are searching for al-Assad, a military commander and coup leader who captured and executed the Saudi Arabia's president, Yasir al-Falani, on national television. The United States launches a full-scale invasion, sending Marines, as well as other forces, to capture al-Assad and bring an end to the war he started. While this dual narrative structure has been done in previous Call of Duty games, primarily Call of Duty 2, the emphasis on a unique story this time around, as opposed to the real-life conflicts of World War II, allow not only for a unique way to tell said story, but also interesting ways to shake up the gameplay from time to time. Call of Duty has adopted this type of storytelling device for most, if not all, of its future installments post-Modern Warfare, but the key to Modern Warfare's success in this department is its pacing. Future installments, with varying degrees of success, use this narrative structure to switch the locales players will be fighting through to make things visually interesting. The pace is usually constant high-octane explosive encounters and never gives the player a time to breathe for a second. One of the most ingenious ways Infinity War design Modern Warfare was designating each faction you play as with its own unique gameplay aspects. The SAS, for example, are a covert operations force dealing with stealth tactics, silenced weapons, and an emphasis on catching enemies off guard. Weapons free. That's a kill. While it's no Splinter Cell or Metal Gear, the stealth missions in the SAS campaign are a great juxtaposition to the bombastic and guns ablazing approach the Marines take in their campaign. While each gameplay style crosses over from time to time, the pacing is always consistent, making the flow from mission to mission seem very natural and immersive. Part of the reason the pace in Modern Warfare is so great is because it keeps the globe trotting to a minimum. While some might point this out as a flaw with the game reusing levels or locations multiple times throughout the campaign, I see it as a plus. It adds a sense of immersion that, in tandem, with the pace of the gameplay works very well in structuring a cohesive narrative. Call of Duty was a series built on the foundation of a realistic depiction of war. While future games would bounce all over the place, from the US to Russia to Africa to Ukraine to the future to space, Infinity Ward knew that keeping this story contained within a small number of locations would make the narrative work better than spreading the story all over the world. While the story itself is great, it's exemplified by fantastic mission structure, offering some of the most memorable missions in the franchise. The immense power the player wields with the AC-130 gunship mission, Death From Above, is put on full display as you level buildings, kill dozens of enemies, and act as a guardian angel of sorts for Bravo Team as they make their way to an extraction point. To really come to grips with the AC-130 mission is to have to go back to when Modern Warfare was released. Nowadays, gunship or drone footage of the war in Afghanistan is a dime a dozen, but back before YouTube exploded in popularity, seeing footage similar to the AC-130 mission was rare. My perspective on the impact this mission had on me has changed since I first played it. At the time, I was an adrenaline-filled teen, blowing away glowing figures that vaguely resembled humans was a blast. Nowadays, going back to this mission, it feels unsettling. Pilots and gunners nonchalantly shouting out quips as they tear through enemy defenses, seemingly a disillusioned with how easily dozens of lives were taken in one blast. Yeah, good kill. I see lots of little pieces down there. 
A perspective of death from above and the actual drone gunship footage are hauntingly similar, and Infinity Ward should be commended for their ability to replicate such a disturbing side of modern warfare. While other games would have reveled in the machismo and destruction, Infinity Ward took a much more subtle, realistic approach that gives perspective on how man has invented new and unique ways to kill each other. All Gilead Up and its follow mission, One Shot, One Kill, is a personal favorite of mine. A flashback mission where players take control of the most badass soldier in the Call of Duty mythos, Captain Price. These two missions are fantastic stealth missions that crank the tension up to 11. Whether it's sneaking through the outskirts of a post-nuclear meltdown in Chernobyl, having to stay absolutely still as a veritable army of Russian soldiers and armor roll right over the player, hidden in plain sight, to walking through the desolate apartments and alleyways of a ghost town, all culminating in a fantastic botched assassination, forcing Macmillan and Price to run for their lives as enemy soldiers bear down on their position. A highlight has to be neutralizing the helicopter chasing the duo, which leads into an impressive crash sequence. injuring Macmillan and forcing the player into this stop-and-go defensive gameplay style halfway through the mission, which heightens the already tense situation. After running for their lives, being badly injured, and running out of ammo, the sniper team has to camp underneath the iconic Ferris wheel of Chernobyl, setting up any defenses they can to survive. The ending sequence is fantastic, allowing for a lot of player freedom with setting up explosive traps or finding a vantage point to get the best drop on an unsuspecting enemy. It's a real chance for players to be strategic and tactical on how they approach an encounter, which is a stark contrast to most of the campaign. Last but not least, Shock and Awe and Aftermath. Next to Death from Above, the most infamous pair of levels for Modern Warfare. These missions flip the script as to what was possible for the first-person shooter genre in terms of storytelling, atmosphere, and tone. A statement on the cliche American hero trope where the badass soldiers fight through hell and back to make it out alive. What was a heroic last-ditch effort to save a pilot of a downed helicopter turns into utter destruction as Al-Assad detonates a nuclear warhead in the capital city, wiping out miles of cities, towns, men, women, and children, along with 30 thousand American troops. Aftermath set the standard for what a Call of Duty game could be narrative-wise, and has been attempted to be topped in future installments to no avail. Players met with silence, winds whipping at high speeds outside the downed Chinook helicopter they awaken. Crawling, in pain, Jackson falls out of the back of the helicopter, onto the ground. Looking up, he sees the destruction left in the nuke's wake. Bodies of fallen comrades litter the streets, buildings collapse under the sheer carnage of the blast. As Jackson tries to stand and walk out of the blast zone, he's met with the sound of children playing on a nearby playground. Through his injuries and radiation, Jackson falls to his knees, looks up to the sky, and dies. When I first played this level all the way back in 2007, I hadn't seen anything like it, and was so naive I thought Jackson had just passed out. He'd be back in a later mission all patched up and ready to go like some super soldier, but to my shock, he didn't reappear. I even replayed the whole game on a higher difficulty thinking I missed something, but no. My player character died mid-game. I guess it's my own naivete, but that's a moment in a mission that stuck with me since I first played it over a decade ago, and for that, Infinity Ward should be commended for their effort. With a nuanced story and fantastic narrative structure, Modern Warfare has a decent base to start with, but the gameplay is what elevates it to great heights. The gunplay of Call of Duty has always been and will continue to be superlative, and Modern Warfare is no exception. Slick, buttery controls, impressive graphical fidelity at a rock-solid 60 frames per second is practically a Call of Duty staple, even starting with the original. While Call of Duty has struggled recently with trying to innovate on an already well-designed formula, Modern Warfare is where the upward trend of the franchise started. Call of Duty 2 was great, Modern Warfare progressed the franchise forward in more ways than one. Like most first-person shooter and Call of Duty games to follow, players are outfitted with two weapons, a primary, usually an assault rifle or submachine gun, and a secondary, most likely a pistol. Frag grenades and explosive equipment like C4, claymores, or grenade launchers add an extra punch to your arsenal. Modern Warfare does a pretty good job in creating scenarios that encourage players to switch up usual gunplay like tossing a flash grenade into a crowded room to blind enemies, flushing enemies out of their cover by throwing frag grenades, or taking out a cluster of enemies with a well-placed or well-timed C4. While Modern Warfare doesn't outright force players to play in a certain way, I feel it offers enough options in its weapon sandbox and allows the player themselves to mix up each encounter as they see fit. Modern Warfare, like most shooters in general, throw in some level-specific gimmicks to freshen up the gunplay even further that I feel are more of an extension of the player's abilities rather than a nuisance. The Bog's Javelin sequence, that allows players to push enemy armor back with a well-placed explosive missile, Shock and Awe's explosive turret sections, the aforementioned AC-130 mission, even a high-speed car chase, just to name a few. Nothing too intrusive, but just enough to add variety in the mission structure. While some may look at Modern Warfare's gameplay now in 2018 as primitive, 
I think it's some of the series' best for a few reasons. First off, the player is always in control. In most recent Call of Duty installments, control of the player is stunted or outright taken away to show off some cool set piece or force feed story beats to the player. In Modern Warfare, most if not all gameplay is handled directly by the player, give or take some quick time events like roping down a cliffside. This is crucial in sustaining the immersion the game does so well at establishing through its pace and mission structure. But most importantly, its level design. While Call of Duty has been harshly criticized more recently for its hand-holding and linear hallway type level design, it wasn't always like that. Modern Warfare's levels are a well-balanced combination of linear and open design that complement the gunplay and do a lot in giving the player freedom in how they attack a combat scenario. The mission, The Bog, has a lot of elements of the combined level design philosophy that culminate in a very well-designed level. Starting off very linear and eventually branching out into more open areas with flanking routes to a full-fledged open arena at the end where enemies come from what seems like everywhere. This school of design is constant throughout the campaign and does a great job of giving the player just the enough freedom that they don't feel restricted in their options in combat. The mission Safe House is probably the best example of this though, giving the player the freedom to tackle the level as they choose. The SES have located Al-Assad's location post-nuclear detonation and are trying to track him down. The player is given the opportunity to search each house in the village in any order they choose, which does wonders for replayability. Every time I replay Safe House, I always choose a different order to search each house in. And while the game is programmed to put Al-Assad in the very last house you search, it's still liberating to have so much freedom. The gunplay, level design, and great story of Modern Warfare could hold its own as a fantastic game, but Modern Warfare had a multiplayer offering, and some offering it was. Modern Warfare's multiplayer suite was, and will be, one of the most innovative, groundbreaking multiplayers of all time. Where multiplayer prior to Modern Warfare was primitive to say the least, with choosing a predetermined loadout based on a class like Medic or Scout, Modern Warfare added RPG elements to the first person shooter, changing the landscape of the genre forever. What's standard today was revolutionary over a decade ago, players are gaining experience points, level up, unlocking new weapons, which have attachments to get the upper hand on your opponents, ingenious additions in the form of perks that allow players to customize their playstyle, like added damage to your weapon or being hidden by UAVs. And speaking of UAVs, kill streaks. Getting three, five, or seven kills grants players access to UAVs, airstrikes, and attack helicopters, respectively. This is an awesome addition that adds incentive to staying alive as long as possible and racking up the kills to help your team out in a big way. Most of the levels constructed for the single player campaign are redesigned slightly for the multiplayer, and the same great level design is retained in that transition. For example, Crossfire is the same level as Warpig with some tweaks here and there. Others are completely original like Strike or Backlot. Either way, the multiplayer maps in Modern Warfare are classic, and some of my favorites being Vacant, Showdown, Crash, and fan favorites like Overgrowth and Shipment. While I can admit that other games in the series improved, streamlined, and innovated on what Modern Warfare brings to the table, there's no denying how influential Modern Warfare's based multiplayer experience was. Since 2007, basically every first-person shooter franchise and even some other franchises tried to replicate the success of Modern Warfare's multiplayer suite, and to this day, I still think Modern Warfare is one of the best the series has to offer. I spent countless hours with friends on Modern Warfare multiplayer, and it was time well spent. I didn't even have time to hit on the little additions Infinity Ward put in Modern Warfare, like the collectible intel strewn about each level. Collecting intel as you go unlocks cheats, like infinite ammo and slow-mo mode, which are great rewards, adding more replayability to the campaign. And speaking of replayability, arcade mode. This is an awesome tweak to the Modern Warfare campaign that sadly hasn't seen a return since. Arcade mode is exactly what it sounds like, where players can gain points for kills, bonus multipliers, and classic arcade elements, all for that sweet high score. It's not a huge addition, but it goes a long way in adding replayability to an already content-heavy game. Like most games nowadays, Modern Warfare got the remaster treatment in 2017. The Modern Warfare remaster is just as fantastic as the original, with the added visual fidelity seen in next-gen games. It's a faithful remaster, at least for the campaign, and some of the improvements visually really help to further the incredible atmosphere and tone in levels such as the previously mentioned Aftermath. Raven Software did an amazing job keeping the realistic art style of the original Modern Warfare while improving on things like lighting and weather effects. If you haven't played Modern Warfare, I'd recommend picking up the remastered version. While the core multiplayer is still intact, elements from more recent games like COD points and loot boxes were added, which might drive some players away, but the single player campaign is just as great as it was 10 years ago. While Modern Warfare may have aged, it has not aged poorly. A fantastic single player campaign with great pacing, excellent mission and level structure with some memorable moments and characters, and a multiplayer component that started a revolution for online gaming. Modern Warfare is one of the best first person shooters ever, and should go down in history as one of the most influential and important games of the last generation.